I'm not gonna lie, bruh, ImageLine's kind of been cooking with these new updates. And now all they need to do is come out with a much more robust audio tracking system slash whatever. And I believe FL Studio will be the perfect doll. Yo, what's up, everybody? To all my beaters and beatettes out there. What did he say? Oh. Yeah, we better not use this intro. <laughs> What's going on everybody? My name is CJ aka CJink and in today's video I'm going to be going over the new FL Studio 24.2 update. There's several new cool features in it. Us producers don't necessarily use all of the new features in an update nor do we need to even know everything that's in a new update. But you know us master beaters out here. <laughs> I can't say so I'm just going to go over some stuff that I know I'll be using and make you aware of some new stuff that's available for you to use. Let's get to it. So the first part of this new update I want to talk about is the improvements to the tap tempo tool. As of right now, when you first click on it, at least for me, it goes ahead and checks apply tempo. Uh, as you might remember, you know, you could be over here trying to tap something and our master tempo changes. Usually nine times out of 10, we don't want it to change as we're tapping it. So now we can thankfully toggle this off. You know, we can just go hog wild with it and it won't even affect our master project tempo over here. So that's a W. Definitely going to be handy if you want to change stuff on the fly without it affecting your entire project like it typically does. Next up, kind of a sub point to the tap tempo here as it kind of goes hand in hand with it. There is a new metronome sound. It is called Pulse. It sounds kind of like the NPC metronome. It's probably pretty much the exact same sound as the NPC metronome. Eh, <laughs> I don't really care. Cool for that. You know, the default sound is this tick here. You know, almost everybody uses that, but like I one time heard uh, some producers using the cowbell. And for me personally, I've just always used it ever since, probably for like two years straight now. I just like the tone it has and you know, it's very sharp and like, it's like just me personally, that's what I prefer. Of course the hi-hat kind of goes hard too though. Nobody, hardly anybody ever talks about the hi-hat, but it goes pretty hard too. Alrighty, so next up they added a new ghost note function within the piano roll here. And now you can completely toggle those on or off if you want to see it, you know, in the same pattern. Um, you know, this might be handy for some of your like drum stuff that kind of starts to lay over top of each other. Or, you know, that way you can just see like your melody and chord progression, but it could also just be handy. Say you want to just see the ghost notes of one, say scale or something like that and not see anything else. So even though I've already been clicking on it to demonstrate that real quick, I've just thrown some random notes in three different channels here. You can click on it and toggle them on and off. And I'm assuming, you know, it changes based on whatever we're on. Yeah. So technically you can toggle all your ghost notes off if you wanted to do that, or you could just turn them off in the top left. You're like a normal person. So I can definitely see this being handy. If you want to see, like I said, just melody stuff, perhaps, you know, just one part of your melody, or maybe even if you're like designing drums or something, you know, say you want to see just one aspect, one or two aspects of it, and you don't want to see everything else. Alrighty. So something else to mention here within the piano roll as well, they added a new snap incoming MIDI to scale option. So to demonstrate that real quick, let's just go over here, turn on snap to scale, uh, set incoming MIDI, snap all devices. All right. So right now I'm playing D and E on my MIDI keyboard. And as you can see, we're actually playing C sharp and D sharp even though I am playing the two keys below it. This can totally be handy if say I want to snap to the major hexatonic scale in the key of F sharp. Now, if I just arm it and record. Dude, that's fire. <laughs> So now this has just snapped everything to key uh, as I played it. Now you really can't play an incorrect note if you use this function. Uh, maybe I need to start using this more to be honest with you. <laughs> Bruh, I'm, I'm hitting D sharp E and F and they're all going to the same note. I'm going to have to make a melody at some point anyways in this video. So let me go ahead and record this. Let me quantize and get this actually where I want it really quick.
Man, that's actually really crazy. I don't know why I've never used that function before in my life, but that's hard. All right, we need to get back on track. All right, so another good function they added in this update is show stacked clips. So to show you this new feature, let's just drag a couple of patterns here that overlap each other. Just some duplicates like, you know, you never know. You'd be sitting here some days and just duplicate something. And for whatever reason, you end up having two instead of just one. In order to identify this, we come over here to our little trusty drop down options arrow. We go to select and now we can either do select stacked clips, which will select the clips that are completely one-to-one -one stacked over top of each other that you would never see until, you know, you sometimes hear it and it's louder than the others or something like that. And uh, after it highlights it, we can just simply hit delete. Or in the case of maybe a pattern that's touching each other, but it's not 100% aligned with it, come down here to select and hit select overlapping clips. And now we can see the ones that are uh, on top of each other that aren't 100% lined up with one another. So this will probably come real in handy if you do a lot of patterns on top of patterns patterns within a project. Maybe even if you just keep everything in one pattern and duplicate it out, that'll be handy for you to just maybe run, you know, before you say you're finished with a beat, be like, hey, do I have anything stacked? Okay, no. Do I have anything overlapped? No. Okay, we're good. Now this is 100% applicable for the piano roll as well. So say I've got a note here that is on top of itself and, you know, you can see it's a little bit darker, but you really won't see it until you hear it, you know, and be like, why is this one so much louder? Uh, same thing. You hit the little drop down arrow, select, and come down to select overlapping notes and delete. Same thing as stacked and overlapping, you know, if it's just one, maybe a little on top of it, we can come over here, select overlapping. And now in this case, nine times out of 10, it's probably all right, depending on what plugin you're using. But nonetheless, it's still a great feature for this new update to have for us. Alrighty, so another feature that's probably pretty handy if you like to, you know, really customize the colors of your projects and whatnot. Me personally, <laughs> I don't hardly fool with any of that anymore. A new feature they added is if you throw down a pattern and you click on the little top left uh, button here, you can go to change color and now it won't come up with the dialog that is also uh, rename and color. Cause used to, anytime you want to change the color, this little dialog right here would also come up. It would come up just like that. Really don't have a reason for it to do both if you just want to change the color. So, so I guess that's pretty handy to have now. If you've been enjoying this video, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It means a whole lot to me and it lets YouTube know that other viewers like you need to watch this as well. Also, if you have not already, be sure to join my group community, The Siege Stands, where I upload all kinds of behind the scenes content, free beats for artists, free melodies for producers. Go join that today, link in the description. Alrighty, another new feature they've added with the AI stem separation here is once you extract the stems, it will actually rename your tracks and let you know what is what over here. They've also added this new safe mode if you ever have some CPU issues when using this, but let's just hit extract real quick and see what happens. Like I said here, it will now name what each track is when it groups them together like this. So we've got our drums here, instruments, and vocals. Alrighty, so two new features within the mixer are uh, very handy actually. So let's say I want to select all of the tracks that this is routed to at once without having to manually, you know, hold shift and control and come over here and click everything that it's routed to that we can see down here at the bottom. So in order to select everything that something is routed to now, all you have to do is right click on the mixer track, go to select tracks that this is routed to. So now it just selected the tracks that this one mixer track is routed to all together. So for, you know, whatever reason, if you want to affect them all at one time, or you can select tracks that is routed to this one. So say, you know, I want to see everything routed to the master tracks routed to this one, bam, everything. <laughs> Except for, you know, these three that I threw to this one. You know, that's going to be handy if you do a lot of like bus processing or, you know, when you group stuff together for like drum buses or instrument buses, stuff like that. So instead of having to come over here and, you know, select one, two, three, four, five, because once you start selecting like this, you know, you can't see what is actually going to this track. So for the sake of making things easier now, all you have to do is just hit right click, select and tracks routed to this one. And now we know exactly what's going to it and it selects them all for us. So they've also added alongside of that something that I think may be one of the biggest features that FL has been missing out on. And that is being able to turn off plug-in delay compensation on a certain track. So I typically run into this whenever I am recording guitar or instruments in general. Typically what will happen is I've got everything laid out. You know, I've started to mix it. I've put some of my plugins on, whether it be delays or uh, just processing plugins that add some latency to the track. And then now let's say, oh, I want to go back and re-record this or I want to do a different take, any options like that. So this is especially handy for if you load up presets that have your mix chain on it. So for example here, this is a distorted guitar channel preset I have. 
And as you can see, I've had it default loaded with everything off just because I don't want the latency on it when I first load it up. And as you can see, once we start turning things on, we start getting track latency here. So after turning everything on, we are up to 20 milliseconds of latency. So that's, you know, that's impossible to track through. And typically I'll just have to come through here, turn everything off except guitar rig and the tuner. And then I would track it and just turn everything back on. However, now with this new update, what you can do is you can click down here in the track latency indicator area. And now we have two new options. We have bypass track latency compensation always or when recording or not playing. That's going to be very handy for any mix heavy plugins or if you're, you know, tracking vocals or really tracking anything, obviously it will turn everything off for that audio track whenever you are recording. And then once you're done recording, everything's back to where it needs to be. You could pretty much just track through a vocal chain now, you know, you don't have to turn stuff off and put it on after you're done. If you select it always, you know, it would probably be fine for uh, doing vocals, but at least for instruments and other stuff, if you have presets like I do here, you can go ahead and get everything dialed in and then just, you know, record like normal and the latency will be gone. So another part of this update really quickly, let's go to the browser. They've now added a feature to where if you start a new project, the sounds tab here can come open. Now, to be 100% honest with you, I have not used FL Cloud at all. And actually, if this is free, let me get it, bro. If all this stuff's still free when you're watching this, you better go claim it. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and show this just as is here because there's a lot here that, you know, really doesn't affect us, but it's just good to know this stuff if you need to know it. Primarily right here, the plugin EQ2 subscript indicators on the high quality button for plus, legacy, and enhanced modes to indicate which mode is active. Plugin scaling, pretty much everything default is scalable now. So that's going to be really cool. Um, I, yeah, you, <laughs> you definitely couldn't make Citrus look like this previously. I think if you come over here, you can... Uh, uh, yeah, you can just <laughs> default it to uh, whatever sizes you want. You'd have to detach it if you, <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty absurd, dude. Yeah, that's handy if you like using a lot of the stock plugins and you know, a lot of them like the effect stuff has had that feature for a while now, but that's good that they're finally catching up and getting everything up to that standard. And now the moment you all have been waiting for the reason you probably clicked on this video, the only way I've got you suckered into watching this is the brand new transporter plugin. What does it do? We're going to find out. I actually used this the other day on a melody and really kind of destroyed and made the altered melody very unique. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just clicking stuff just to get some sort of sound out of it, just to use it really before I made this video. So let's actually RTFM for once and see what the manual tells us about this. Now it is one of those stock plugins that you only get to keep within the all plugins edition. However, like I was doing with it, I was just using it and recording the audio straight out of it. And then, you know, it'll give you a warning when you go to save the project saying, hey, this can't be reopened once you've closed this and then I just delete it off the channel. If it does say trial version, make sure you are bouncing everything to audio when using this plugin so you get to keep what sounds you're making with it. And then, you know, it's also the incentive to just go ahead and upgrade whenever you can so you get to use this and you don't have to always bounce to audio, obviously. Now, that all being said, what does Transporter do? Transporter is a real-time re-looping effect that triggers loops based on transits detected. Analyzing the audio signal identifies transient peaks and uses them to trigger loops based on that audio, allowing for dynamic and responsive playback. Parameters fine tune how the transients are detected and how loops are spread in the stereo space. A whole lot of that was said. Um, what does it mean? The best thing I can say for this plugin is mess around with it for yourself and figure it all out. Now there's all kinds of settings here. Mode, auto bouncing. Let's, let's look in the modes real quick. Auto loop events are triggered by transients. Bouncing. Okay, so it'll speed up, you know, as it loops like that. Da, 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 like that adaptive adjust the minimum loop length so with adaptive i think that just means that the more transients you have the longer it is i'm not gonna lie bro this is like the most complex thing image line has ever dropped <laughs> i'm sure someone else can explain it much better than me but basically it reminds me of kind of a combo between the loop and stutter and repeat feature in something like uh d blues glitch or in like effect tricks or any of those stepped effects plugins except and it's basically basing everything off of transients or tempo. Let me uh, duplicate this melody over and show you what kind of cool stuff you can come up with with this plugin. Listening to our melody here, uh, we've got loop A and loop B. As we look here back at our little diagram, the distance between the little line and the larger and the thicker line is the minimum loop length. The right head is the kind of uh, what's, you know, actually writing the audio for it to be looped. Loop A and B, they can be different here in the parameters. Reading 
ping once again, just showing what you're actually playing back. So you really have to loop things to really see how this plugin works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to pattern mode. All right, so let's just hit play and see what happens. Alrighty, so you can hear it's gotten a little louder. So let's just go ahead and take our dry out of it completely. Okay, so once again, here's our right head, here's our playback. So we've already looped. You know, we're already halfway through the pattern again and it's just now playing it. So when we are here, what we've got now, we've got loop A and loop B. They're both, you can see A and B where they're both at. So they're both being played back the same thing right now uh, because they're in the middle. Now, once we start messing with one or the other, it starts getting wild. So if I go ahead and increase the stereo spread here, now it should be identical to our dry signal. Might be a little bit wider actually. Yeah, so once we've affected the stereo spread here and got it where we want it, as you can see, our playback is the same. We can start messing around with the triggering. For the triggering here, when we put it all the way down, that's gonna be the larger, larger transients here. So really the main like hits and starts of the sounds here. Now, once we increase this, it's gonna really start getting into little smaller sections. As you can see, we've got like four chops for everything. To really start getting messy with it, we can change it to where it reverses it. And then we can do some octave shifting which I think is awesome, to be honest. That's what I've done the most with it. Set it up if you want to. Kind of split it 50-50, just kind of randomizes which side's gonna go up and down. Now we can start messing around with the AB ratio here. Let's mess with the length, because why not? Bouncing. Tempo based. I actually like the bouncing, to be honest. There's two ways you can record this. You can either arm the track itself here in FL and just hit the record button. However, you can also use Edison and that way it is recorded onto this track and then you drag it into FL. That was what I did with it. So if like say I wanna loop this next section here. So that's the one handy thing about doing it with Edison is you can just loop one little eight bar section of it versus having to throw it all out and record it into the playlist like I originally did. You know, it just really depends on whatever you wanna do. I mean, there's not one way that I think is better than all the others. And once again, like I said, every time you save it, it's just gonna tell you this is a trial plugin, uh, blah, blah, blah. So once once you get it into audio, you can come over here and delete it. And now when you save it, it won't be giving you that warning anymore. Thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It will help me out a whole lot and it will let YouTube know that other people need to watch this and see my horrible jokes and me floundering how to figure this plugin out for 10 minutes, I guess. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. My name is CJ, AKA CJ. Be sure to check out everything in the description. Join my group if you have not. Once again, like and subscribe. And yeah, thank you all for watching. My name is CJ. AKAC Jink. Have a good whatever time of day you're watching this and God bless.